Thank you for joining me. You know, we're a little less than a month away from the rescheduled primary election on June 2nd. We're also still fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. And from where we stand today, it is unlikely that we'll eradicate COVID-19 from our Commonwealth by June 2nd. But we still need to hold a primary election. Free and fair elections are essential to who we are as a country. And democracy is perhaps even more important than ever during times of crisis. Because of the virus, some Pennsylvanians may be nervous about going to a voting place. Fortunately, Pennsylvanians can now vote by mail. Last fall, I signed into law the most sweeping improvements to our elections in 80 years. The bipartisan bill created the new option to vote by mail. At the time, we had no idea how important this change would be for the health and safety of Pennsylvanians. This primary election is the first chance people have to take advantage of the new convenient way to cast their ballot. The easiest way to do this is to visit votespa.com to request a ballot conveniently and securely. Even before the pandemic reached Pennsylvania, people were signing up quickly. And the Department of State recently launched an awareness initiative to make sure people know about it. It has been tremendously successful. Already, nearly a million voters have applied to vote by mail. This allows voters to make their choices from the safety of their own home, then send in their ballot through the mail. It just has to be returned by 8 p.m. on Election Day. The process takes only a few minutes at votespa.com, and the deadline to apply for a mail-in ballot for the June 2nd primary is 5 p.m. on May 26th. However, I strongly encourage Pennsylvanians considering voting by mail to apply as soon as possible. I'm going to be uh, applying today. The voters in our county elections offices are also coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. So providing them with as much time as possible to process your application and get your ballot in the mail is a great way to thank them for their hard work. While many of us will take advantage of this opportunity to vote by mail, polling places will still be open for people who prefer to vote in person on election day, though where you vote may change for this primary. So please watch for information from your county's election office if your polling place moves to a new location. We also want to make sure that all polling places are doing everything possible to protect the public. So the Department of State has purchased masks, and other protective equipment which will be distributed along with guidance on how to conduct elections safely. Any Pennsylvanian who is unsure of their voting location, registration status, or has another voting related question can call 1-877-VOTES-PA for assistance. Again, I'd like to emphasize how important it is for voters to have their voice heard and to be able to cast their ballot even in a pandemic. And I encourage voters who wish to sign up for mail-in voting to do so as soon as possible. Pennsylvania's new mail-in voting is a great option for voters who would prefer to forego a trip to a physical polling place. And voters will have this option on June 2nd and in all elections in the future. I hope it allows many Pennsylvanians to have their voices heard that otherwise couldn't. I want to thank all the election officials, the poll workers, and the Pennsylvania voters who are working together to make this primary election successful and ensure that every vote counts. Now I'm going to turn things over to Secretary Bookvar. Thank you, Governor. It's a pleasure to be with you here today to update everyone on preparations for Pennsylvania's June 2nd primary election. We all expected 2020 to be a historic year um, in Pennsylvania elections, and we all knew that Pennsylvanians would all be voting on new voting systems, new secure and accessible voting systems that meet current standards. And we also knew in the fall after uh, Governor Wolf signed Act 77, the historic bipartisan legislation, that Pennsylvanians would have more options for voting than in the last eight decades plus. Thank goodness one of those options was vote by mail without having to provide a reason or excuse. And as Governor Wolf said, at the time we did not know quite how important this would be, uh, but those measures are critical to help us now. These unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures 
And we, the Department of State, have been working in partnership with county, state, and national partners to advance measures for both in-person voting and vote by mail and other options along the way. So we've taken multiple steps to make sure to protect both the continuity of our electoral process while also ensuring the highest standards of public health. So first, as the governor described at length, we have embarked on a comprehensive voter education campaign to inform the public not only of the new date for the primary of June 2nd, but also urge the safe, secure, and easy option of vote by mail. Over the last month, we have sent millions of postcards to all registered Republicans and Democrats, primary households, um, to make sure that everybody knows how to vote by mail as well as the new date. We've also launched a bilingual public awareness campaign, including radio, television, and multiple digital platforms, including social channels, uh, streaming services, and mobile applications. This has all proven to be very, very effective. As of this morning, uh, over 960,000 applications had been submitted for either vote by mail or absentee ballots. 76% of those applications have come on online through votespa.com. Uh, this is definitely the best way to do it if you have access to the web. And if you enter your email address, you'll get notifications when your, when your application has been approved, when your ballot has been sent to you, and when your ballot has been received. Again, votespa.com. However, if any voter would like to have a ballot mailed to them, call 1-877-VOTES-PA. Department of State has had thousands and thousands of calls and has mailed out somewhere in the range of 20,000 ballots to voters who were not able to do so online. Second, the Department of State, the governor, the administration are working with counties to, to ease decisions about consolidation of polling places, locations of polling places, and easing poll worker staffing for the primary. So the administration, first and foremost, um, is going to be is urging schools and other facilities to work with your counties to serve as polling places on election day. We all know that we've been under stay-at-home orders. Um, there, there are some changes in that now there's going to be some shifting from red to yellow. Regardless, on election day, every voter can leave their home, exercise proper social distancing, wear masks, do everything that's in place for the, the COVID-19 emergency, but you should feel free to go ahead and exercise your right to vote. Same for poll workers. And facilities um, such as schools, other uh, private or public facilities such as uh, community centers, clubs, halls, all of such facilities may and we encourage to serve as polling place locations on June 2nd. Help Pennsylvanians vote and we'll be doing so in a safe way. Third, as Governor Wolf mentioned, Department of State, in order to make sure that June 2nd is as safely carried out as could possibly be, we ordered protection kits, infection protection kits that include things like masks, gloves, sanitizers, both hand sanitizers and sanitizing materials for the voting systems. Uh, floor marking tape to mark social distance. Uh, counties are also uh, purchasing other equipment and supplies as well. So we will make sure that voting is safe and secure on election day. And fourth, to ensure all of the above happen uh, as safely and securely as possible, the department was very happy to receive uh, two different um, sources of funds from the federal government over the last several months. We received uh, $14 million from CARES Act COVID-19 specific dollars and about $15 million previous to that, more focused on election security and administration. Both From both pots of money, these are, by the way, in addition to the $2018 that we had received to the, from the federal government that went to the counties to help them upgrade their voting systems. So the new funds of money, we are going to be subgranting $13 million of those funds directly to the counties. Last week, we sent all the counties notifications of how much they could expect to receive. And those funds can be used for things such as increasing their staffing, increased equipment, protective supplies, facilitating their increased volume of mail-in and absentee ballots, sending mailings to voters and other actions to improve voting safety, security, and administration. 
So those are, that's an overview of the plans for the upcoming election. For those not registered to vote, keep in mind May 18th is the deadline to register to vote for the June 2nd primary. You can register online at votespa.com, or you could call your county election office. Um, as Governor Wolf mentioned, I want to really emphasize that voters who are planning to go to the polls on Election Day should be aware that your polling place may have changed due to the temporary consolidations that are permitted under Act 12 and due to the fact that some facilities will not be used at this time, such as senior facilities. Voters should look for your county announcements, and once counties have finalized these decisions, you can also go to votespa.com forward slash polls in the weeks before June 2nd to check on your polling place location. Voters have until May 26th at 5 p.m. to apply for a mail-in ballot, but as Governor Wolf said, I can't say more strongly, apply today. Do like Governor Wolf is doing. Um, apply today, because we all know that um, the, the longer it takes for you to apply, the longer it will take for you to get your ballot, and then you, we need to make sure that all ballots are received by June 2nd. So apply today. You can apply online, we'll say it again, votespa.com, or you could call 877-VOTES-PA. And one last thing, if you already applied for a mail-in or absentee ballot when the when the primary was going to be April 28th, you don't need to reapply. Your prior application counts, um, and you're good to go. So it's only if you have not applied yet do you need to reapply. I want to assure, assure all Pennsylvanians that in the lead up to and on June 2nd, we will safely and efficiently do what America does best. We will vote in a secure and safe election. Thank you very much, and now we'll open up for questions. Thank you, Secretary. Our first five questions are actually for you. Um, all of them are from PA Post, and the first one is about polling places. What power, if any, do the state and counties have to compel venues that previously committed to hosting in-person voting for the primary to do so June 2nd if the venues are under closure orders and don't want to reopen for the election? So as I mentioned before, um, we are going to be putting out a notice that makes it clear that, because there's been some question, so some facilities have asked, if I'm being ordered to be closed, does that mean I can't serve as plain place? So we are, this week, in the next couple of days, we'll be putting out a notice that will make it clear, absolutely, you can be open. There are some types of facilities that can be mandated to serve as polling places. One of those is schools. So there's actually a statutory provision that says that schools must work with their county election offices to be, serve as polling places. Um, but for private facilities, that mandate wouldn't apply. So, however, I think Governor Wolf would agree with me. We, and Secretary Levine, and, and all of us uh, strongly urge facilities, private and public, to work with your counties, serve as polling places, help uh, help serve democracy. Thank you. Our next two questions are on poll workers. The Department of State has issued guidance on polling place staffing that some election directors interpret to mean they must staff a combined polling place, place with as many workers or close to it as if the voting locations remain separate. Others say they can cut it to half to two-thirds of workers. To what extent can counties reduce poll worker staffing at consolidating voting locations? So we are finalizing the details of the answer to that question, and we'll be uh, issuing that to the counties this week. However, there will be able to be reductions, and that's what's important here. The, the Act 12 of 2020 did absolutely allow for polling place consolidations and easing of poll worker restrictions, and we will be providing more specific guidance in the next couple of days. Thank you. Last week, state election officials testified the National Guard could be made available to fill in where poll workers are needed to make up for the shortages some counties expect to face. They said election directors simply need to make the state aware of the need and would be connected with local Guard volunteers who would be available to be trained and work the primary in plain clothes. To what extent have counties thus far signaled they want to avail themselves of this option, and how many Guardsmen are available to help? So those conversations have just begun. As you probably know, the National Guard have been key members on the front lines of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And so we've ha started having those conversations, but the details are not final yet. Um, but regardless of how it ends up playing out, please know that any guards 
man or woman serving as a poll worker would be serving in plain clothes. Um, and so there's, you know, there are, but we're working closely with the National Guard to see how best that could, that could be um, effectuated. Great. The next question, question is also from the caucus, so PA Post and the caucus, and it's on funding. Pennsylvania is getting $14 million to support voting during the pandemic from initial federal stimulus funding rounds. Where does that stand, and what will it be used for? A recent study estimated the Commonwealth could need as much as $75 million, and the caucus says 80 to $90 million, more than that, to safely run its elections due to the public health crisis. If the federal government doesn't come through, what is Pennsylvania's plan to pay for this? So there's a whole bunch of questions in there. I'll start with the end. So the Brennan Center is who came out with the report that I'm assuming that they're referring to. And, um, and, I'll, and they're looking at the whole year. So first of all, um, that's what the Brennan Center is strongly advocating for. And we certainly are advocating as well with the federal government to uh, issue more funds to the states prior to November. As for now, we were thrilled to receive the $14 million under the CARES Act. Uh, for COVID-related expenses. And as I mentioned earlier, we decided um, it, in Pennsylvania to allocate some of that directly to the counties because they all have different uh, priorities for and needs and also spend some of it directly at the state level. So for example, the precinct protection kits that I mentioned earlier, those are being, uh, those are being ordered and reimbursed through the COVID dollars. We are also going to be implementing in Pennsylvania a, an accessible uh, vote by mail op option for voters with disabilities. So that's not currently something that exists, but we're gonna use this funding to pay for that in the, in the coming months. Um, and then on the, for the county side, we distributed $6 million of that, 13, of that $14 million that's going to the counties distributed based on voter registration numbers as of April 13th. And they can decide whether they want to use those funds to increase their staffing or equipment or communications to voters or uh, third party services to help process uh, ballots. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of flexibility um, as long as it's increased expenditures related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, and I have one more for you then. We'll give you a break. Okay. And, um, so this one, again, from PA Post, and it's a, little, it's a long one. County election directors have asked state legislators to allow them to start processing absentee and mailed ballots in advance of Election Day, providing specific guidance on how to prevent information leaks and address other concerns related to earlier pre-canvassing. Lawmakers haven't said how they'll respond, if at all, to these requests. Given that mailed ballot requests already are more than five times their number for the last presidential primary and the critical importance of timely results to public confidence in elections, can your administration otherwise facilitate either your executive order and or the Department of State directive an earlier processing start time if the legislature doesn't act? We, we very much support, the administration very much supports earlier uh, processing of those absentee and mail-in ballots. And so we would urge the legislature, for sure, we would very much support that action being taken um, and hope to have that com those conversations shortly. So th it was part of the conversations early on, and we hope to revisit those conversations to allow the counties to start processing those ballots sooner. Great. Thank you, Secretary. Now Thank we have a few questions for the governor. Hello, Governor. Hello. Um, this first question <clears throat> is from CNHI. Can you talk about the move to join New York and other states to acquire PPE and when the state expects to begin getting equipment through the regional effort? Yeah, we, again, we, we joined, Pennsylvania joined in that effort, um, I think as Governor Cuomo said yesterday, uh, to pool our purchasing power. Uh, New York alone is going to buy $3 billion worth of materials, uh, all of us together, uh, probably more than $5 billion. Uh, how soon uh, uh, we actually start to purchase stuff really depends on, on the pr producers, the suppliers. Uh, but we're already meeting uh, with the six other states uh, to make sure that, that we are starting the process of, of uh, creating the demand. Thank you. This one is from Fox 56, and it's on the Health Disparity Task Force. A few weeks ago, there wasn't much race data, 
then you and Lieutenant Governor started a task force. Where are we in terms of race data and what are the numbers showing? Yeah, uh, and the reason we did that was because originally uh, no one was collecting data uh, on race. Uh, so we mandated that, that those filing reports on uh, the incidence of disease uh, should include uh, how it's affecting specific vulnerable populations. Uh, and uh, so far, uh, more and more uh, organizations are doing that, uh, not as many as we would like, and so we'll continue to work on it. There'll be a report coming out later this week in terms of where we are uh, at that point, uh, but again, we will work to get to 100% reporting on this, we think, very important piece of information. We have a couple of questions about masks. The first one from PA Post. Will the state require voters to wear masks at the polls? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, again, I'm not a, a lawyer, but, but th this whole thing, if it's going to work, is going to work because Pennsylvanians recognize they don't want to infect their fellow Pennsylvanians. Uh, and that's if they go to the store, they go back to work, they're with their family. Uh, and it certainly is true if they go to a, a crowded polls, polling place. Uh, the whole thing here is each of us, all 12.8 million Pennsylvanians have the responsibility for not infecting our friends and neighbors and people that we're close to. Uh, and that's true in all these settings and it's certainly going to be true on election day. So the, the, the Commonwealth is not doing anything to force anybody to do anything. We're basically saying this is something that we ought to be doing because it's the right thing to do and it's, it's, it's a good thing to do to protect uh, the people around us. And as a follow-up on that from WLVR, we're hearing reports of people who do not wish to wear masks when going to local businesses. What will happen if people come to vote but choose not to follow social distancing guidelines? Will they be turned away from the polls? I, I think each of the polling places will make those decisions, but, but uh, the, the Commonwealth is not weighing in on that. Again, if you go to any place and you're not wearing a mask or you're not doing everything in your power to keep people around you from being infected, or potentially being infected, it's just not a good thing to do. And uh, so that's true on, on uh, election day. It's also true in every other day of, of, uh, of, of life moving forward. The next question is from Politico on mail-in ballots. And I'm going to ask you, sir, and then the secretary may also want to um, contribute to that. Um, Governor and secretary, do you have any concerns about the ability of counties to process large increases of mail-in <coughs> ballot applications in a timely manner at the same time that they're dealing with budget deficits and hiring freezes due to coronavirus? Yeah, uh, we do. And we, we, both of us, and I'll let the secretary weigh in too, but, but uh, I think we all had that concern well before the pandemic uh, uh, affected us the way it would has. Um, th this is, uh, as the secretary said, almost a million applications for absentee ballots right now. That's a big, huge increase uh, in, in the applicants, and that's a huge increase uh, in the, the work that is going to be required at the county election offices uh, all around the state. So, yeah, this is, this is a concern, uh, and uh, it, it's something that, that uh, uh, we, we are going to need to do everything we can to, to help. Uh, and, and recognize that it is uh, uh, an issue. One of the things, as the secretary said, we, we, I thought we in the legislature were, were together in this in terms of moving up the ability to, to, to count. Um, up until now, you had to wait until the polls were closed. The legislature has moved it up to 7 a.m. On, on election day, uh, but I would love to see it moved up way beyond before that so that, that counties do have the ability to start counting. These are the kinds of things that I think would help counties uh, adjust to the, the uh, big surge in, in uh, this new kind of, of uh, vote. Secretary, you want to add anything? Thank you. Um, so yes, um, as Governor Wolf mentioned, we, we have had concerns. Um, and so some of the things, what, it's one of the reasons why we gave a substantial uh, subgrant of the federal dollars to the counties so that they can decide. Some counties have bought special equipment that can help actually open the ballots, separate all the envelopes, um, and then, of course, high-speed, high-capacity scanners are critical in this. Um, but the sooner they can start the, the pre-canvassing and the canvassing of the ballots, of course, the sooner they can get it done. So last week, we did have a hearing uh, in front of the state, Senate State Government Committee, um, and several of the counties did express that 
uh, that voters should be prepared that they may not have 100% of the counting done on election day with canvassing not starting until 7 a.m. on election day, particularly because the volume is, is unprecedented, which is a good thing. And we still highly, highly urge people, vote by mail, votespa.com. Thank you. I have a few other questions for you. This one from PA Post. Are voters required to show ID if their polling place has moved? So no, the polling the voter ID is required when you change precincts. And so the first time a voter is either registered to vote or uh, has changed the precinct in which they're registered, that's when they have to show ID. The polling place, polling places change fairly regularly and that is not what triggers the ID requirement. We have a question about poll workers from the Observer Reporter. There are many unemployed people who could use local poll worker pay, but if they're receiving unemployment compensation, would it jeopardize their unemployment benefit? I do not believe so because of the, the minimum requirements for when uh, income would, would jeopardize that, but I'm happy to check with the Department of Labor and Industry and get you that, uh, an answer for sure. Thank you. This question is from PA Post. We've heard from two Allegheny County voters who received the wrong ballot, one for a different election district, the other for a party other than the one for which they're registered. Currently, what legal procedure allows for discarding a mailed-in ballot and issuing a new one? Can you provide details on how ballots are individually accounted for to address this situation? So uh, first and foremost, I want every voter to know that Ballots have specific correspondence ID and voter ID that's part of the, the, the absentee or mail-in ballot that's issued to a voter. So, and only one ballot can be entered for a voter um, into the system. So there, it's literally not possible for more than one ballot to be attributed to a voter uh, in our system. So, um, so I want to reassure everybody that it's, it's when such an error, if such an error happens, immediately what you should do is call your county election office and walk through the process. What they'll probably have you do is come, void, you know, return the ballot that was incorrect, they'll issue the correct ballot. We have another question on mail-in ballots from the York Daily Record. Why are you not moving to mail-in ballots only? So a number of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, and actually at the hearing last week, um, Wendy Underhill, who is one of the leaders of the National Council for State Legislatures, talked about this as well. Um, the, we, the best way at this time to balance the public health emergency needs with access to voting is to have what, what she referred to as a hybrid election, to allow options for both. So the biggest reason is that voters with disabilities, certain voters with disabilities, cannot vote by mail without assistance at this time. And it's one of the reasons why we're, we were very happy to receive the federal uh, appropriations so that we could implement before November a vote by mail option for voters with disabilities. But at this time, uh, we don't have that option. So we are mandated, as well we should be, by federal law uh, to provide opportunities for voters with disabilities to vote. And on top of that, there are going to be other voters who just won't have heard there's not enough time to really ensure adequate participation in our democracy um, by vote by mail alone. So we're, that's why we're really looking at this as a multi-front approach. We will have the safest in-person voting as possible on June 2nd. And in the meantime, did I mention we're urging everybody to vote by mail? So. so we have one last question, and it's for you, Secretary, and it's from the York Dispatch. Will there be any recourse for voters who apply for a mail-in ballot at the last minute, but who do not receive their ballot in time to vote in the primary? So the, we, we are obligated to follow Pennsylvania law and federal law. Um, so that at this time, um, I, the, what's the, the best part, one of the best parts about Act 77 is that it extended the deadlines for return of the ballot. So what I would say is this, the ballot, it's why we're really suggesting people start now. Get your application in now, get your ballot, and as soon as your ballot is received, you don't even have to send it back by mail. If you're doing this at the last minute, don't do it by mail. 
You can deliver your ballot in person to your county election office as late as 8 p.m. on Election Day. It had previously been the Friday before Election Day. So that ability to just hand walk your ballot in to the county election office as late as 8 p.m. on Election Day, that's the safest way to do it. So we would urge people not to get to that point. As soon as you get your ballot, make sure you get it in um, and you know get all your neighbors to do it early as well. That's great. Great information to have. Thank you so much, Secretary. Thank you, Governor Wolf. That is all the time we have for today. We will have another, another briefing tomorrow with the Department of Health. Thank you.